Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're summer well. I just came back from the Netherlands and Europe and I was doing work at the university but in my spare time I was going around shooting 4k in different cities and stuff like that. But yeah, when I came back, uh, the device I had before, same, same case as this, but I was running an Intel i7-4790K and trying to edit the 4K video on the on the timeline was virtually impossible due to the severe lag. Uh, this was caused by uh, heavy bottlenecking with the CPU. I'll get more into that later on in the video. So when I came back, I did have quite a bit of spare time. I did some research and figured out uh, what the best components would be to upgrade to make this a very strong uh, 4K editing machine for under $1,000. And yeah, I did um, get some awesome bargain deals, went all over Vancouver, Lower Mainland area, as well as uh, I actually did go down to the United States to buy some parts there in the state of Washington. And yeah, I'm pretty confident that this is, uh, as of uh, September 2017 the best uh, bargain value you can get for a workstation PC. I'm going to be talking about uh, three main topics in this video. Number one will of course be the technical specifications of the device. Uh, as well I'm going to be running some benchmarks to give you guys a good understanding of how powerful this machine really is. And uh, furthermore, the, it does as well hold up quite well for gaming. Uh, hopefully you guys can get a good idea of uh, how all these specs run and uh, maybe I can convince you to do some hardware changes. So without further ado, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you. So first off, the PC is running Windows 10. That's pretty much a given though, since most PCs do use our operating system nowadays. Next off, um, it's probably the most important uh, piece of equipment in the whole device, the CPU. It's a Ryzen 7 1700. So right off the bat, this runs at relatively the same performance as the Intel i7-6900K, which is double the price. So yeah, this is probably the best bargain uh, CPU deal I've ever seen for roughly around 250 to 300 US dollars. It, you're getting eight cores, uh, 16 threads, and great overclocking potential. Now you guys are probably wondering, why didn't you go for the 1700X or the 1800X? Well, this is the same architecture. The only difference is those two higher ones have a slightly better um, silicon crystal. But it's better to, um, rather than spend the extra few hundred dollars on those ones, it's better to save it and maybe invest toward uh, a really good liquid cooler. For example, I, I got the H63 Corsair liquid cooler and that allows me to get this CPU um, from its base of 3.0 gigahertz all the way up to 3.75 gigahertz. Uh, at that clock speed, it already runs far superior over the 1800X running at stock. Furthermore, I also want to mention that with the Ryzen uh, CPUs, you can really take advantage of uh, memory clock speed. Uh, we know that the default DDR4 clock speed is 2133. I bought 
uh, mine uh, that can have a potential speed of 2600 megahertz. Uh, w once I overclock to get to that speed, I can really feel the difference in processing power. So that's another thing I want to emphasize when uh, when getting these pro um, these CPUs. Keep in mind that you can really uh, take advantage of high clock speed memory. So the next item I have here is a motherboard. It's an ASUS Prime B350 Plus. Uh, it's a mid tier. It was about a hundred dollars. Uh, it, the one tier higher is the X370. The reason why I didn't choose that one is because this one provides more than enough ports and uh, I also don't need SLI which is an advantage with the X370. For any of you guys who don't know, SLI is when you can run two um, graphics cards at once. But yeah, that's really not um, important uh, when you're doing uh, workstation use. And furthermore, a lot of games don't even uh, get benefit from that. The only uh, bit of a, an issue I had with this motherboard was the fact that it only supports three fans. Uh, but yeah, you can always get splitters like I did. It's not a big deal. So the next item I want to talk about is the RAM. I have DDR4 RAM inside the PC running at um, 2666 megahertz. Uh, my recommendation for RAM is to choose uh, whatever, whatever brand you want, but try and get as high clock speed as possible. And I have 32 gigs in it. Uh, uh, the, obviously the higher the better. I recommend at least 16 because when I'm doing video editing, uh, a, a single render will use up about 14 gigabytes of the memory. And you obviously want to be doing, be able to have the freedom to do other tasks as well during that rendering process. So that, yeah, that, that 32 gigabytes gives you that edge. But yeah, other than that, the RAM should be a pretty simple um, set of guidelines to follow. Just uh, number one, get as high clock speed as possible. Then number two, either get at least 16 gigs or maybe go for 32 gigs. Uh, also make sure um, that you have it on du dual channel because then you can get some extra performance out of that. The next thing I want to talk about is the case the PC is built on. The, the only, I can't really tell you which case is the best because it's all a personal preference. For example, for me, I wanted something that's that's uh, semi-portable uh, as well as small and uh, you know, and also has a window so you can see the components running inside. So I chose the NZXT mid tower case. Uh, it's uh, the model S340. Uh, yeah, I also like it because it's uh, it has a, a great organization uh, amenities in the back for cable management. But yeah, I'll emphasize once again, it's really up to you on what what the case should be. It really doesn't matter. Uh, just make sure that uh, you have sufficient airflow going th throughout the case. For example, on mine, I have air being sucked in at the front and then being blown out at the back as well as uh, on the roof here. The next item I want to talk about is the power supply. Uh, all I recommend for that is to j just find a good quality one because uh, as time progresses, the technology of power supplies will pretty much stay the same. Uh, so uh, my rec uh, I would just uh, go on uh, w one of the calculator websites and figure out what your recommended power supply is and then go a wee bit over that just in case uh, you'll, be, you'll need some more power in the future. And uh, as for the uh, GPU, uh, it is true that uh, the Ryzen series um, does not have integrated graphics, so the GPU will be mandatory. Uh, for workstation use, like uh, you know, AutoCAD uh, video, 4K video editing, the, uh, it really doesn't matter how powerful your GPU is. So I would just recommend get uh, get a good budget one unless you really need it. For example, I got the 980 Ti, but that's just because I do gaming on the side. Uh, even a 1050 will be good enough. And those only re those retail for um, only around 140 US or something like that. Uh, the, the next item would be the CPU cooler. It, it isn't bad to get uh, an air cooler. Uh, the Ryzen 7 7700, it actually came with a, a stock uh, air cooler, but if you really want to get more overclocking performance, you're going to need to go look at Cooler. So for me, uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I got the H60 by Corsair. The next thing I want to talk about are the drives. Uh, the one thing I want to emphasize on is make sure you have a solid state drive for your operating system and other crucial files. 
uh, it, you know, a disc just isn't an option these days. Uh, it's they're way too slow for boot ups, boot ups and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, make sure you have at least 256 gigabytes of solid state um, hard drive disk space. And uh, but for um, when you're storing 4K, your you know the 4K all the 4K files you have and stuff, you can it doesn't matter. You can just store it on a disk drive. You can get um, for example a four terabyte disk drive for about eighty dollars. Uh, it's really up to you on which brand name and stuff to choose. So now on to part two of this video. What I'm going to do next is run some benchmarks. First off, I'm going to start off with a Cinebench. So yeah, let's give it a run. Hey guys, so I just ran uh, two Cinebench tests and it took about 30 seconds but it gives a good general idea of, of the CPU performance and how well it performs as a workstation overall. Anyway, uh, my two scores were 1608 and 1605. Um, yeah, it, it, it's upon close inspection, it, uh, it almost doubles the i7 4770K CPU and that's been one of the most popular CPUs of all time for gaming. So yeah, that's a uh, remarkable right off the bat. Uh, it, it absolutely kills the uh, um, 3770 by quite a lot. Uh, all these ones down here, they're all um, laptop uh, CPUs when it has an M. So it's, it's uh, almost, uh, it's, it's basically tripling those scores. But yeah, let's uh, run some more tests. So the next test I'm going to run here is user benchmark. Uh, it's, it's a good nifty tool for figuring out uh, roughly the how, how good your system compares amongst all other that have been tested on this website. It gives a good uh, gives a nod, uh, the score depicting how well it does in gaming, uh, desktop performance as well as workstation use. So let's give it a shot. Hey guys, so I just finished the user benchmark stress test. It gets a 98% score for gaming. I just want to make a quick note though that uh, it's mainly GPU dependent. Uh, for me, I'm using a really powerful graphics card, the GTX 980 Ti by NVIDIA. It really doesn't matter um, which type of GPU you use for workstation use. So yeah, please keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, the desktop score is 91%. And for workstation, it gets a whopping 101% playing at UFO status. Uh, it's very difficult to find a CPU equivalent to the 1700 uh, in this price range. Uh, if you want to go any, any step further, really you're going to have to get either the i9 Intel series or the Threadripper. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the i9 uh, currently has a 12 core available and the thread revert is uh, its top tier is 16 core 32 thread and this is uh, as of September 2017 and yeah uh, the other note I want to make is that uh, this is with the CPU overclocked at 3.75 gigahertz so uh, this the 1700 on stock obviously won't score this high but yeah this I just want to showcase uh, the computer at its maximum potential so yeah, I'll leave a link in the description um, for uh, these specific user benchmark scores. You can check out which individual um, score of each component is and maybe compare it to yours. 
Hey guys, so the last thing I'm going to do, part three of this video, is a gaming test. Um, so yeah, I have it maxed out, um, ultra settings on this 4K monitor here. Uh, yeah, so it's this is probably one of the most graphic intense games right now in 2017, it's Battlefield 1. But yeah, um, I'm really excited to see um, how, how far this PC can really be pushed. Uh, there's going to be statistics shown at the top left. Uh, so you'll be able to see it on my screen recording, which I'm going to show after this clip. And so yeah, let's uh, see how this plays out. Hey guys, I just want to give a big thank you if you made it this far in the video. I really appreciate you for watching it. Um, I personally had a lot of fun making the video. I got to push this computer to its absolute limits. I just got this 4K monitor today, for example, and you know, I've never seen my video card struggle. But that last clip of uh, the game being shown, uh, it was only averaging at about 25 frames per second, which is still incredibly impressive because that's uh, as I said, that's the absolute limits of how games can be put at. The 4K editing performance in any other workstation use is absolutely unbelievable with this PC. Um, you know, uh, a few years ago, this would have thought um, to have been impossible without investing at least maybe five grand into a computer. Uh, so, I have the specs of the of my PC I built printed off right here. I'll leave them um, it all in the description. It's a uh, every fine uh, detail of my build and it gives a it also gives a little comment of uh, wage components used for etc anyway guys feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this content I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting some up in the future and uh, feel free also to give it a like show me a comment 
And yeah, we'll stay in touch. So thanks again for watching, guys. And I uh, hope you all have a great day. Goodbye.